Hello, this is Just Vine. Today we're going to show you two bots for the price of one. Well, the price of one may free, also be but the price you know. <laughs> anyway, so we got Jury Bot here. And as I had alluded to earlier in the week, she is our other meaty bot along with Laura. So the reason I'm showing you these two at the moment is because it helps uh, it helps show you precisely why both of these bots are what they are. If I just told you about Laura Laura bot is okay, but she only serves half of the purpose, really. You need to go through both bots in order to learn the lesson of meaties in itself. They also let you check for different things, too. Now, since she's new, I don't technically have a uh, point system for her yet. Although I'm sure Rillian will figure out something quickly. But for now, I'm just gonna do my meaties, and as I do, I'm gonna tell you about what I'm thinking when I'm trying stuff out. Uh, there you go. And all that sort of stuff. So the reason why I'm playing Mika right now is the way Mika's meaties work oops, is almost all of them have to be perfect. Bison's you can finagle with a little bit because a lot of his enders are safe. <laughs> but for Mika, not so much. A lot of Mika's involve you either throwing afterwards or going for a button that's minus two, which is okay, but it does mean that you have to essentially be careful about when you apply more pressure. And as you can see, Jury is a little more fast-paced. Oh, I think I remember really and had some idea of a point system that was like... Punishing Ryo Damsatsu, I think? Or doing a media after it or something? So the thing about meaties, and the reason why we feel you need more than one bot to really test out the medium full, <clears throat> is a lot of your meaties, you, you need to essentially test your meaty for a few different things. You need to test your meaty for when you are going to punish and what happens after your punish and that should be like the first meaty you ever learn. You should know that if you like throwing on Armika for example, you should learn right away what will let you gain more pressure. So. 
I, being an army kid that likes using Brimstone, I know that I can do five medium punch after a dash. I know that I can go for a throw afterwards. And that honestly sets me up for a lot more pressure because all of those things let me do the same meaty pressure later on or something close to it. So as you can see, I'm whiffing my brimstone here a little bit, partially because I'm using heavy, but I'm using heavy because I don't normally use heavy. And I don't normally use heavy because, well, it doesn't really do that much damage. Or rather, the situations come up a lot less frequently than it does for the light kick. Or the EX. Because Brimstone's pretty short range. Well, for a command throw anyway. Well, for Mika's command throws. <laughs> but... I also found out that I can do that. And the reason why I learned that was because I was like, hmm, you know what would be great? If I could just slide on people who do Dragon Punch on Wake Up. It won't be the X, but the non-metered versions, it actually does. So... <laughs> To me, that also meant that I could play the game a little differently against Shotos. And when you're fighting online at lower ranks, well, you're going to be fighting Shotos like all the time. So that's it's okay to base your plan around that sort of thing. It really is, because it means you'll have more fun, which in the end is a little more important. You want to actually have a reason to play the game. If you don't, if you don't go for what makes you enjoy the game more in exchange for something that sounds like it's more optimal or anything like that, eh, you might not actually have the wherewithal to practice the damn thing. And then where are you? Anyway, point being, as you can see, I'm whiffing with that, not just because of my familiarity being a little lower, but Jure is an interesting character because a lot of the pressure she does in neutral, a lot of her neutral game, has a lot more pushback. than some other characters, Laura being one of them. But like Laura, she wants to generally get in. She can't do anything if she doesn't get in. She can zone. That was interesting. But, like, her her light pinwheel, for example. It's technically minus on block. It's not that safe. But it pushes you back in a way that makes it safe. And she has a lot of weird stuff like that. You gotta think about the game, and you gotta think about your meaties at a lot of different spaces than you normally would. So because they're get-in characters, because 
a lot of their tools are based around being able to get in on you. Or at least keep you in a place where it's really easy to. They make good p candidates for it. And Jury in particular, because she has a wake up EXDP, you can actually test the viability of certain things, depending. That's also why I don't have her as recovery meter, because I want her to vary what she does with her buttons. So that was another interesting one there. I can't, after she Ryo Danzatsu's at certain spaces, punish her with a command throw. And then I can't set up my meaty pressure. So she can wake up with Ryo Danzatsu in some spaces. And if my reaction was, oh, I should throw her because I can throw you most other times, well, then you might have some trouble. I can't remember if they fixed it so that Ryo Dan Satsu was on the uh, airborne on earlier frames or not, but anyway, that that that's me being sidetracked. Anyway, so you want to pick ones that you get punished from. Or, well, you punish people with. Like, another one that I personally had to learn pretty quickly because I like this target combo. I had to learn what to do after that. Obviously, if I just dash and then do a medium punch, it won't do anything. It'll be too early. So I had to think about that for a while. And then I realized... that I could just do Stomp Chop again and it'd probably be enough frames. And for me, part of what I enjoy in a meaty is I enjoy being able to loop them. I enjoy doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> Mostly because it frustrates people, I mean. Also, it's just easier for me personally to remember. I don't have to come up with this big, complicated, multi-tiered system of branching for my meetings. I can just remember, oh, I do the same thing that I did to get the meeting in the first place. There's better options for more damage, better set up, whatever, but at this level, you just want to have something that's reliable. So what Jury Bot is supposed to help you with is it's supposed to help you find what you can reliably do when you're punishing something. So I'm gonna ease up on her a little bit. Instead of spazzing out and just going for consecutive pressure. And I'm gonna actually try and punish things. So another advantage that Mika has in terms of meaty pressure and why I like this character a lot is her 5 medium punch, the one that sets everything up for like her bread and butter combos and all that sort of stuff, it's only 5 frames for startup. So and it's safe on block. So you can use that to mix up her throw pressure 
and hitting a button. So if they try to escape on you, well, if you were go, if you figured that out ahead of time, or you had made them defensive, or if you just spotted that they tend to do that, well, she doesn't have to work very hard to do that. So when I learn a midi, I'm looking for something that lets me do the easy thing that lets me pressure more and lets me mix up more. Also, Rio Dantsatsuya has slightly weird, not like totally weird, but slightly weird blocks done. So if you were also Amiga, so now, so now you picked out, okay, well, I like throwing, and I know that after a throw, after my brimstone, I can just dash and hit a five frame button and learn the three medias from there. Well, now one of them lets you do slide and punish with slide and usually it's going to be a crush counter if you're using it in the right situation so now you can go hmm what maybe should i do next probably the one that lets you do things off of crush counter slide the reason being is it's the next phase in you punishing someone this is how people who are like gold rank and above get a lot of their damage off of people who are less skilled. It's not that they know a lot of fancy combos, although they probably do. It's more so that stuff like this, stuff like this type of mini pressure, lets them just keep going and that's how you get good, really. You figure out what you can do to let yourself do what you want to do for longer than the opponent can do what they want to do. So that's what you personally have to do. You have to figure out what your flow chart, per se, is against somebody who you guess right every time. Because it'll happen. It, it will remarkably happen for you sometimes. Sometimes you will just keep guessing correctly, or the opponent doesn't even know what you are doing and is used to situations where they have to think more or where their opponent hesitates more but you're not hesitating because you're just doing your flowchart and that's how you win you just do the flowchart that you personally picked out and then you're good to go but you base that on things that are easy for you and things that let you have fun So Mika's got really good meaty pressure. 
which makes it hard for Jury Bot to do a lot unless she does her DP. Or. If she Ryo Danzatsu out of the throw. But once you leave her alone, she's pretty hard to get back in on. Unless she does that. So you have to be patient with her. And with a character like Jury, if you're patient with her, well, then she gets more resources. So what the point system will be designing is basically to encourage situations where you have to defend and punish at weird distances because that's what Jury specializes in. So the bots are always designed to harness whatever natural strength the character has as a whole. But the nice thing about the bots is, as I was mentioning in another stream, you kind of get to dick around a little more than you would against a CPU or even just a, du a, a, a dummy. Because <laughs> part of finding what you're comfortable with is taking stock of a few different things. The first thing obviously being what do you like and what do you find yourself able to punish with the most. In my case, 5 Heavy Punch starts basically every punish I will ever do. She has other stuff, but at the lower level, that's what I invested my points in the most, because that's the button what that made me feel most comfortable. But you also got to focus on what does your meaty end with? What do you want your meaty to do situationally? In my case, I always aim for something that puts me in a situation where I can just keep going. Where I can loop it, or if I fail to loop it for some reason, like for instance the opponent quick rising when I thought they were going to delay rise, I want to just be able to have that be a reset instead. So for example, the brimstone needy I was talking about.
as you can see, because the five heavy punch, or five medium punch, is what leads the go, what will happen is I will just chain with the five medium punch into light kick. Ah, oh, okay then. <laughs> that should put you in enough weird situations. So that will happen. Your meaties have to basically be automatic. It's like speed dial. So even though she quick rises, I'm basically in a reset situation. And therefore I don't get punished that hard for doing the wrong thing. Well, guessing wrong. Because that's what meaties basically are, they're 50-50. But, at that range, sure he gets a little benefit, but I don't get damaged, which is the important part. Eventually, once you get a little more skilled, you can learn to make your speed dial more of a branch. And for example, for me, know that if I hit with my five heavy punch, I can just go into heavy punch instead and then do a bread and butter combo. So my Rio Don Satsu is minus six. Ah, I see. Well, that's probably a good thing. Pretend that I'm a more heavily defensive Mika. And let's pretend I don't like being next to people, because being next to people means I can probably also get thrown. Maybe I don't like the 50-50 of a knockdown situation. Maybe I want to keep them guessing in a different way. Mika has stuff to do that. But it takes a little more creativity because that's not technically how she's built. But that's perfectly fine. There's lots of different flavors and styles to how you can play a character. But point being, maybe I want to meet Maybe I want to punish that puts me a little further away from my opponent. So 
So the obvious solution to me, the one of the only other few moves that knocks down at a distance would either be slide or shooting peach. Now since I actually know some slide ones, I'm going to do that instead, just to demonstrate my point. <laughs> Wrong slide. No, I think it was something like... Dash into Peach into mm, I think it was Medium Bunch. As you can see, not quite uh, my innate affinity here, but I wanted you to get a better idea of what not knowing a media looks like and trying to figure it out. Wait, does that maybe? That would be hilarious. <laughs> it'd be the opposite of what I was looking for, but it'd be hilarious. And it's really easy to uh, read on Wake, but... I like finding and using things like that.
Mm -hmm. Well, it was the thought that counts. But that's also the sort of thing that you should probably do. If something amuses you, chances are there's a reason it amuses you. And chances are you're probably going to want to do the stupid thing. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> a fine shenanigan at that. So let's move on to Lorabot, so you have a little better idea of the difference. on bison here. There she is. So I'm gonna play some casuals a bit for a little more uh, dynamism. And uh, in between, let Lorabot run so you can see a little bit of the difference. meter for this. So basically, I'm going to be practicing my Inferno meaties. More specifically, my Medium Inferno. I know my EX Inferno pu punish is Medium Scissor into 5 Heavy Kick for basically the entire set of possibilities. But that's because Round EX one. Inferno, when I have meter, Fight. is what I'm almost always going to do for a punish. I'm going to go into some form of knee into crouching medium punch.
So I know that dash and throw won't work off of the Inferno, as much as I would love for that to be true. So next I'm going to see if I can get something off of Surprised I traded. <laughs> but that shows that the meaty was good. More or less. Actually, how long is Dinjin Hadoken's meaty frames anyway? Er, not meaty frames, invincibility frames. Say it. Five? Round one. Well, I can tell you that Karim's five frame CA can on reaction counter hit that. So it means it goes off when Super Freeze ends and malts it. Hmm. I wonder why that works then. Okay, that sounds about right. That would have me hitting on the first non invincible. I didn't even notice. Oh man. But when you're doing meaties and you're practicing meaties, you probably are not paying that much attention to the opponent and your own health bar anyway. Probably should, but eh. It's one of my weaknesses that I get really focused on something and end up forgetting all the other things I needed to keep track of. Fight! <laughs> 
I'm misbehaving a little bit relative to my goals. So I should shift a little bit to uh, not throw as much, really. Since it's so much of an ingrained thing in me at this point, it's really hard not to. to five heavy kicks seems to do enough, but it's definitely an imperfect medium for sure. really hard not to do it. But in the end, part of the reason why bots are preferable for practicing at least the early stage of your meaty is because it's really, really easy to get caught up in a lot of the uh, things that you program to help you win stuff. <laughs> like me randomly doing throw, for example. Those don't trigger in bots because, one, you're under less pressure. And since you're under less pressure, the emotion behind a lot of the programming, at least for some people, is different. When you're put in a situation that, when you learn something for a stressful situation, you're going to not recognize it necessarily in the less stressful one and vice versa. If you learn something in a not stressful situation, like against a bot, for example. Because you didn't learn it under pressure, you'll mess up the execution a lot, all that sort of stuff, even if you've grinded it for a really long time. But that only helps you with the low stress version of it, rather than the high stress version of it. 
So bots are a way for you to control that a little bit. It's sort of an in-between. Because the only real pressure against a bot, the only real stress is the point system itself, which you technically make up and decide if you care about it or not. Obviously, there's more stuff going on too, so that there's a different type of stress involved. Yeah, didn't I fight him uh, like yesterday or something? That was my fault. the proper ed response for sure you lose. but yeah the back dash and using v skill on wake up i think or something like that and i don't blame you for not rematching that although it was interesting to do so Anyway, back to usual business. Though I might stop doing casuals after one more match or so. So the disadvantage of Loraba is obviously she doesn't really have a dragon punch. And because of that, it messes with a little bit in terms of being able to test if it's 100% like viable. But you should be checking your frame data anyway if you're practicing meaties. In fact, if you don't know frame data, that's probably the easiest way to get really quick exposure to a lot of different frame data. Your
rank up. Yes. It's a casual match. Oh, well, I can't tell what the announcer lady said. Though. Yeah, she says absolute gibberish some days. <laughs> Mostly because I'm not really paying attention to her. Fight! But that was just me practicing my meaty, more or less. I'm fairly sure I can rely on standing heavy kick after dash well enough off of a quick rise. a good person for uh, stress testing said meaty. So I should try to win next time so I get more matches. If he rematches me. He did get kind of brutally thrashed a little bit. idea that would work.
it's really easy to autopilot against this type of opponent. Ah, damn, messed it up. Oops. give me an idea on something to test though so I'm gonna turn off my uh, casual match here and focus on Laura bot a little more since you haven't technically gotten to see much of her yet today As you can see, Laura overall is a little less spazzy than Jury. So the things that you can punish her off of are a little more predictable. So you can do a whole bunch of more easily timed stuff. And just have a good I idea of what is possible. Jury bot is more so the advanced version of the mini bot. So she's more so there to stress test your meaties, to make sure that you can do them at different timings and spaces. But they're very similar bots in that they do a lot of similar things, mechanically speaking. They both do some, some unsafe-ish thing that pushes you out enough for it to be kind of safe. But if you do manage to catch them off of something, I didn't notice that one upwards. Hmm. Noted for if I ever meet that kin again. So you kind of need them both in stages. And if you ever feel like you're having frustrations or difficulty with Laura, or with Jury Bot, for example, you can just go hang out with Laura for a little bit. something like I was saying there's different muscle memories in your head for learning a meme and for a combo in general they're basically the same concept 
there's the muscle memory of the actual execution itself that you learn just like the basics of the timing of the buttons then there's the muscle memory of the spacing when are you supposed to do it etc and that's the one where there's a little more stress involved and you want something like Lorabot, for example. Just to make sure that you're not training against a lifeless doll while still having a system in place that can let you focus on different aspects of the meeting. and adjust to finding a new one if you need to. And then there's the additional stress of an opponent who puts you under pressure and puts you in a lot of unfamiliar places. And that is a, another layer of muscle memory altogether. Now, in Street Fighter V, this does vary from character to character. You do kind of have to grind that type of muscle memory for a lot of different characters at higher levels when you're doing a lot more complex stuff. But for the basic stuff, for when you're in gold or lower, you're mostly just trying to get an idea of when you need to breathe, when something needs to branch out differently instead, what spaces you can do different things for. Laura doesn't offer that much complexity because for one thing, she doesn't have as much backdashes and she doesn't have a dragon punch. And she doesn't really push you out as much as Jury does. So that's why we have different levels of it. There's different sets of muscle memory that you need to learn. And this goes the same for combos too, although Right now, I'm only aware of us having the advanced version of a combo bot. Maybe Ryu could be the other one, I don't know. But a boogie bot is the advanced level of combo bot because like Jury, she puts you under a lot of different pressure. while doing relatively safe things and pushing you out to different spaces. So, what happens when you're fighting Lorabot or Jurybot and you're unsure of if it's working out exactly. Well, there's a few different ways you can go about doing that. The first way to double check something for a MIDI is to go against Ryu and set his wake up MIDIs to be as specific things. We'll do another video on that some other day, but you can do it with any like three or four frame move. You just set their wake up to three frames, to a three frame jab or a four frame jab. 
Then give them whatever wake up option they have in another one. And then give them some invincible move for the third one, or a throw, or even a jump bag. And that can cover a decent amount of situations, or maybe even all three of those in your remaining slots. But doing that sort of thing, it doesn't help you against spacing. And it doesn't help you against timing, because the timing is always going to be the same. It's right after they wake up. And it's always going to be at the same spacing unless you move around a little bit. But even then, that doesn't give you much information when you're just practicing on an, off of a knockdown and you sit in a specific spot. You need to learn where your moves knock down the opponent at various situations. So unlike Mika, who has very interchangeable meetings and very interchangeable buttons for starting them, Bison's a little more complex. His buttons are not as fast. and certainly not as safe for certain buttons. But they also allow you to do a much higher variation of moves and setups. So Bison's the part of why Bison is such a monster and kind of a jerk is because unlike Armika, unlike Laura, his meaties have so many branches and he has so many different moves that can meaty that he can mix up a lot of different situations in a way that Mika and Laura simply can't replicate. But with Bison, that just means style and finding what's comfortable is even more important. Because there are just more things to do. So I had mentioned on Wednesday 
that one of the meaties you could do off of Bison's slide felt really uncomfortable to me. So it was um, two light kick, five heavy kick, two medium kick, five heavy kick. This is a perfect meaty. But it wasn't comfortable to me for a few reasons. For one thing, since I use D-pad, I'm a pad player, my medium button, my medium kick in particular, is on the trigger button. And it's on there for a whole bunch of different reasons that are a completely different show in itself. But it's mostly because this is the button I rely on the least in my neutral pressure. Like, I can just hit this button for almost every single- yeah, every single character I have under my belt. And it'll just do the same thing. It'll poke out... It's generally slow, so throwing it out in a tense situation is not the best thing to do. But it's there to zone. It's there to make somebody behave and generally keep them from getting it on. But this doesn't require a lot of twitch. It doesn't require a lot of quick reactions. So I have it on the button that, quite frankly, isn't that great for doing very quick reactions. But in a meaty, it's different. In a meaty, you need to hit this button at a perfect timing. So if there's even a little lag in it, for me pushing this button, well, it's probably not going to work. And if it did work, I probably wouldn't be able to do it as well. So if you did not see Wednesday's stream, we basically came up with the brilliant idea of, well, light scissor kick fills a similar time frame, so why not do that? And I am obviously much happier with this because it sets up a situation that I couldn't really do after that in the first place. So, there's controller reasons why you might not prefer a button for me. But, there's also reasons such as not liking how slow a certain button is, or if you're finding difficulty. For example, one of the ones we went through in order to figure out a perfect me off of this slide. Was we figured out, oh, I can't actually do this meaty if I use the uh, I can't do it if I use the crouching medium punch. Afterwards. But I could get it down with the light kick. 
the uh, the scissor kick would work for me after that. I don't know why still, but it probably has something to do with just weird brain wiring or psychology. There's lots of reasons for it to be something that could have happened. And charge characters in particular have a lot of weirdnesses that can happen. But with the light kick it worked, and the reason why it worked was the delay I had was longer. than what I had available. So, find a shorter button. It may not be perfect, and you'll obviously eventually get better at the media as you go, and therefore it won't work anymore. But, there's no use beating yourself up of trying to get the perfect media if you can't actually do it. If for some reason your body just is not capable of performing it. At pro levels, I'm sure there's certain things that you may feel like you have to do or whatever, but even then, the reason why they're pro is because they found the things that utilize whatever they are best at. They don't try to fit themselves in the box of most optimal all the time. They're also just generally better at doing the most optimal thing. Now I remember what it was. Okay. Anyway, I don't have too much to say. And Wednesday's stream goes over some of the specifics of the bison stuff that I'm doing right now a little better. But hopefully now you understand why we have two bots for meaties. And a little bit of the muscle memory involved and how to go about finding what to do.
so as always I'm just fine and catch our bot on Sunday at 2-mk.org and it'll have all of the information about the goal system and the inputs and all that fun stuff so have an electrifying weekend and I will see you on Monday.